Well, good Thursday morning, everybody. It is November 4th. And uh, today we're going to, I, I've changed my mind at the last moment here this morning. I want to do that, as you well know. Um, I, we're going to take off, um, take the bite of John chapter 8, verses 39 to 47. First, I was going to take the whole rest of the chapter, just one big chunk, but I changed it in my mind, and we're just going to deal with uh, 39 to 47. So, and we'll, we'll finish chapter 8 tomorrow morning, okay? So, let's look at John 8, 39 to 47. <coughs> Remember, Jesus is still in the temple, and this is still um, uh, the, the festival of the booths, okay? Uh, it's the end, towards the end of the festival that we're dealing with now. And this uh, area is titled, Jesus and Abraham. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing what Abraham did. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are indeed doing what your father does. They said to him, we are not illegitimate children. We have one father, God himself. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I come, came from God, and now I am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot accept my word. You are from your father, the devil, and you choose to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is from God hears the words of God. The reason you do not hear them is that you are not from God. Okay, um, this is an interesting bit of scripture in the context of that we like to think of Jesus as this nice, sweet, always gentle and, and, and reserved person. But here Jesus comes across quite forceful. Uh, he's been fairly forceful in this whole exchange uh, in the temple during this festival. Um, and, of course, we know in the overturning of the tables that it comes at the beginning of John's gospel. And towards the end in the others and the synoptics. But in John's, it starts off with the turning of the overturning of the money, money launderer's tables or money changer's tables. I shouldn't say launderer's. That's not right. Um, but the money changer's tables. So Jesus can, have, can, can be a man of passion. Uh, he can be a man with, with fixed, filled with emotion and and conviction, and so here he he doesn't mince his words uh, with dealing with them. Um, and they throw a bit of a jab in there, I believe, in verse forty one, kind of an illusion there, and saying we are not illegitimate children; uh, we have one Father, God Himself. Um, that's a bit of a barb, I think, at Jesus and the the idea of the the miraculous birth, the claim that you know that. that uh, Jesus was born from the Father, which we believe, um, but would have been something that was you know, perhaps a bit scandalous, well, perhaps involved, um, in Jesus' time. And there, you know, there obviously were people that didn't believe Mary's claim, uh, and there still are people that don't believe that claim. There's, there's the whole thing about and even the identity of a particular Roman soldier that supposedly is the father of Jesus, but we won't belabor that. But that's a jab. So they throw a jab at Jesus, so there's jabs back and forth here. Now, this is a pugilist event with words. Um, so they are uh, attacking him with that. But he's pointing out that um, if you cannot accept my word, you can't accept the, 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 the word of God. Um, and if you're standing against God, then who are you? Whose side are you standing on? And I think that's something we need to remember ourselves. When we're when we get in the way, and when we try to divide, when we try to disrupt, when we, for our own want of our own, the fly in here this morning, for, for because of our our own egos, we get in. We allow ourselves to get into a position where we're causing disruption in the body of the church. Uh, the function of the church, the ministry of the church. Church is about ministry, folks. Church is not about brick and mortar. It's not about a, a, uh, it's not about any of that. It's about doing God's work. It's not about living, in, you know, building a a monument to God uh, in each small town. Uh, we do we do uh, mourn the loss of our old churches, and I very much do do that myself. And I uh, post lots of photos of old churches. But we have to remember that those are, that's not the work of God. The work of God is what the people are doing for the people to help each other, to, to bring each other to Christ. 
to that life ever after. We're going to talk about that more tomorrow, though, when we talk about that. Um, but here he is definitely passionate about the idea that they are getting in the way of the ministry of God. They're, they are finding themselves on the side of Satan. Get behind me, Satan, as Jesus says to Peter, remember? And basically he's saying the same thing to these guys. Get behind me. And is there times when we should say to ourselves, I'm sure we say to others perhaps, get behind me, Satan, because what you're doing is counter to the ministry of the church. What you're doing is getting in the way of doing the work of the church because of your own ego. I need to be, keep that in check myself. I need to do a self-check on that and be prayerful about that. But I think we all need to be prayerful about that, that we don't allow um, all of those things to get in the way of God's will. If we find ourselves against God, we find ourselves in a bad place. That's where these Pharisees and scribes are at right now. And that's not where we want to be, folks. So let's lift up a prayer for that today and have a very blessed day. Come on back tomorrow. We'll end chapter 8. And then Monday, we'll start afresh with chapter 9. Have a blessed one. And please, please, please be a blessing to someone today. Don't forget it's Thursday. So there is drive through communion from 5 to 5.15. And then again, we will be doing a, uh, I'll put up a video at 7. But we do have training for the concert. I've got my Heart Twins t-shirt on today. We do have training tonight at 6.30 for those that are working on being workers at the concert. So don't forget that. Come on up to the church at 6.30 if you are one of the workers for the concert. Have a blessed one. We'll see you in the morning.